So in this video, we are going to learn our second method for solving systems of linear equations, and that is by substitution. So your objective is that you can solve a linear um, system of linear equations by just using substitution. So let's review. So what is our systems of equations? Well, remember, this is two or more lines. So what are we trying to find when we're solving a system of equations? Well, we're trying to find the intersection point. Well, when is there no solution? The lines are parallel to each other. That means they don't intersect. And what happens when there's infinitely many solutions? Well, that means they are the same line. So let's review one more to solving by graphing. Um, so yesterday we graphed the first line. We're going to do that in red. So I start down 5, 3, 4, 5, go up to over 3. Again, remember from yesterday's video. You want to do all your points. So then the next one I'm going to start up to and go down to over one. That should be enough because I know where the lines intersect. Now the problem with this compared to yesterday, yesterday all your intersections were nice. Well notice these two are not intersecting at a very nice coordinate. This is a reason why we have to learn substitution and the third method because of this could all happen with graphing. So graphing sometimes can be unpredictable and whether or not it's going to be useful for us because we can't see if there's an actual intersection point. So when I'm solving systems of equations, I prefer to use substitution or elimination. And graphing sometimes, but most of the time, I go with today's method or the one you're going to learn in the next video. So solving system by substitution. So remember, if you're substituting something in, you are replacing one expression with another. And to do systems um, by substitution, you want at least one variable to be isolated. So what does that mean? I want in one equation either a y equals, an x equals, an a equals, and so forth. If I have that, and I can have that in both equations, I'm going to be able to solve this by substitution. You can solve it if it's not that way, but um, other methods might be more preferred than using substitution. So here's your first system by solving by substitution. So notice I'm already set up for substitution because I have y equals. y equals 2x. So I'm going to take the 2x and substitute it in for the y in this equation. So I'm just going to replace y. Nothing else changes. So what would that look like? I have 7x minus Instead of y, we're replacing it by 2x, because y equals 2x. And notice I substitute in parentheses. That's very important so um, you don't get lost with your minus signs or your distributive property. Um, this problem doesn't matter too much, but it will later on in other problems. All right, so notice I re just replaced y by 2x. Everything else is the same. I have the minus, the 7x, and the 15. So now I'm going to solve this, and I can because I have the same variable. These are unsolvable individually because they have um, two variables. So I have 7x minus 2x, which is 5x, equals 15, divide by 5, x equals 3. So this is half my problem. I have the x coordinate of the point of intersection. It is 3. I need to figure out the y coordinate. So to do that, I'm going to put 3 in for x into either equation. It doesn't matter which one. Um, you will still get the same solution if 3 is correct. So I have y equals, I'm going to replace in the first one, 2. And then now instead of x, I know x equals 3. So y is 2 times 3, which is 6. So my point of intersection of these two lines is 3, 6. Make sure you put the parentheses around it because this is a point of intersection. So on B, I have 3x minus y equals 17. I do not have a variable isolated or by itself, but I do in the second one, I have y equals negative 2x plus 8. So I'm going to take what it equals, 
and I'm going to replace the y, since y equals this, in the first equation. So I'm going to have 3x minus negative 2x plus 8 instead of y, because we're replacing y, or substituting in, equals 17. So to solve this, I have a negative, which is like a negative 1, so I'm going to distribute the negative 1. This is why parentheses are important, so I have 3x plus 2x, because negative times a negative is a positive, minus 8 equals 17. 5x minus 8 equals 17 by combining like terms, add 8, 5x equals 25, divide by 5, x equals 5, so that is my x coordinate of my solution. I need my y coordinate, so I'm going to plug it into either one. I'm going to do it into the second one, so I have y equals negative 2, I know x equals 5 from what I just solved plus 8, negative 10 plus 8 equals negative 2. So my point of intersection is 5, negative 2. So on C, I, this is a situation where I have y equals on both of them. Um, so it doesn't matter which one I pick to replace in the other. I'm just going to take the first one, y equals this. So I'm going to replace the y in the second equation, so I get 2x plus 1 equals x plus 3, and I just replace this y. So I'm going to minus my x over. I have x plus 1 equals 3 minus 1, x equals 2, that is my x coordinate. And then I'm going to plug 2 into either one, I'm going to do the second one, it looks a little easier to me. So I have 2 instead of x plus 3, so y equals 5. So my point of intersection of these two lines is 2, 5. One thing I haven't mentioned yet, um, you can always check your answer. Um, I plugged into this one and got 2 and I'll 5. I should be able to plug 2 into the first one and also get 5. And I do 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. So this answer checks so I know I have the correct solution. So on D, again I'm going to, I have it all set up for substitution because I have y equals, I have 3x plus 2, so I'm going to replace this y, so I have 3x minus, so y, I have 3x plus 2 equals negative 2. So again there's a negative 1 so I can distribute, I have 3x minus 3x minus 2 equals negative 2. So I have 3x minus 3x which is 0x so they essentially cancel each other out and I'm left with 2 equals 2. So if you remember back to our equations when we're solving equations if you got a statement like this where 2 does equal 2 we write many solutions. And what's happening here if you think of our graphing from the previous video these two lines are the same. One last example, again, I'm all set up to use substitution because I have y equals, so I'm going to replace this y, so I have 6x plus 2 instead of y, it's 2 times y, so I'm going to times it now by what y equals, negative 3x plus 5, and that equals 1. Distributing the 2, I get 6x minus 6x plus 10 equals 1. So 6x minus 6x, again that's 0x, so that goes away. So I have 10 equals 1. Well, remember from solving equations when 10 equals 1 is not true, so this is no solution. So again, thinking back to the last video, when there's no solution, these lines are parallel to each other. That's why they do not intersect. Alright, so just kind of review. Um, to use substitution, you need one variable to be isolated and replace that. Um, place just that variable. Um, remember, if you get like 3 equals 3 equals many solutions, 
and 3 equals 7 is no solution. That will pop up on your problems tomorrow. And one last reminder, make sure you do your reflection so you get credit for watching this video.